Nurse Amy here to do a gardening video today. I haven't done one of those in a long time, but I am growing sweet potatoes and I'm so excited to show them to you because I haven't even seen them myself. They're still buried right here. But I just wanna talk a little bit about my soil first. So I grow in South Florida in containers because our natural soil outside is really terrible. It doesn't hold a lot of things. It will grow bananas and it will, will grow sugar cane and it will grow coconuts pretty well. Um, but pretty much everything else needs to be amended. So I find that growing in containers works out pretty well for me. So I've planted my sweet potatoes in a four by four container. I started off with organic soil. I added lots of compost and natural materials like papers and I added red worms and I find that the red worms are my workers and so what they've done over time is I've added natural organic vegetable cuttings and things that are left over from uh, perhaps making salads or vegetables uh, things that aren't full of pesticides or wax or things like that, but real natural things that worms can eat. And what happens is the red worms eat that food and they poop something called castings, worm castings. And it's just a fancy word for wor worm poop, which are full of all kinds of nutrients. And they actually feed my plants really well. In fact, this growing right here is turmeric. And basically all I did was go to the grocery store, get some turmeric, cut it up in little pieces and plant it. And that is actually what I did with my sweet potatoes. But other ways that you can use sweet potatoes or grow sweet potatoes is to not only buy them in your grocery store, find the organic if you can, so they're not covered in pesticides and they've been grown as natural as possible, but you can buy something called slips. And slips are pre-grown cuttings of sweet potatoes. And you can get those actually before it's time for you to plant. It is a summer crop. You do want to plant it when the ground is warm. If perhaps you, you plant it a little earlier, you can cover the ground with some black plastic so that it stays nice and warm. Um, but my soil, again, has lots of red worms, lots of organic fertilizer. It's got um, paper, and I really just sort of rotated my crops so I don't deplete too many nutrients out. I do like to use one particular fertilizer from Dr. Earth, and this has a special ingredient called uh, True Biotic. And True Biotic is just some mycorrhizae, and they have a variety of those. And mycorrhizae is important to roots. It takes up nutrients from the soil and feeds it to the plant in exchange for a sugar or a carbohydrate. So it works in cohesion with the plant's root. So it really does, I feel, make my plants grow much bigger. So make sure you add some mycorrhizae to your soil. But again, I just took pieces of sweet potatoes. I didn't pre-grow them. Some people say that you could take pieces, stick uh, Q-tips in them, and put them in just a little bit of water and allow them to grow indoors while you're waiting for the climate to warm up and be perfect. It is a tropical plant. It does like heat, and sweet potatoes take about four months. Now, interesting fact is that they're not related to regular potatoes. Sweet potatoes is a whole different plant. It's actually related to the morning glory. So they grow these beautiful, long, long vines. In fact, these go up on a trellis, over behind me, and then down my patio another at least 10 feet. <laughs> now, if you add too much nitrogen to your soil, you're gonna have more of these vines, which by the way are edible, like spinach. You're gonna have more of these vines than you're gonna have sweet potatoes. So, I really did not fertilize these so much, but this uh, fertilizer I did show you has nitrogen 4%, phosphate 6% and potash 3%. So it's not real high in the nitrogen, so I'm not getting a ton of huge leaves and I have seen some of my sweet potato growth. So let's take a moment. I'm gonna show you these sweet potatoes. You don't wanna water them about three weeks before you harvest them. While you are growing them over the four month period, that's about how long it takes, you want to water them so that it feels moist in the soil about one to two inches. So you're going to have to put your fingers in there and get it dirty. You don't want to overwater them. The great thing about containers is you're not going to sit in mud. So 
you have some good drainage. Oh, another really helpful thing for your soil to increase drainage, because we get a ton of rain here in South Florida, is to add coconut core. It sort of loosens up the soil and it allows drainage. It'll hold like little sponges, just enough water for the roots, but it doesn't create the muddy environment, which no plant really likes that. So um, that is another helpful thing to add to your soil. So we're gonna take a minute. Um, you wanna use a cultivator or you can use a hoe and you wanna dig away from where you think the sweet potatoes are. They are easily damaged, their skin. So you don't wanna put this right into a sweet potato. You need to be very careful. So when you harvest them, make sure you kind of go out from where you believe the bundle is. And I'm gonna adjust the camera so you can see a little bit closer. All right, you wanna allow these sweet potatoes to sit in the sun for several hours and then move them to a well-ventilated spot and keep them at about 85 to 90 degrees for 10 to 15 days. So we're gonna leave these out in the sun for a few hours, gently. Just find a spot off to the side. So we have two so far. Let's see what else we have. We have another one, not quite as wide, but still looks good. Oh wow, there's another nice big one. So, so far we have four sweet potatoes. And let's see what else we got here. I do have several planted. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Don't give up, folks. We're gonna let them dry and then we're gonna give them aeration for 10 to 15 days. And then you can store them at 55 degrees, but with some humidity. Um, probably about 75 to 80%. Once they're cured, they're gonna keep for several months. And you know, in the future, when you wanna plant next year, if these have lasted long enough, you can actually cut them in sections. I cut them in about one and a half to two inch sections, just like that. And I just stuck them in the ground around here. So there are other places that I have sweet potatoes. Oh, here's one right here, I see it. Let's see if we can get that one out. Oh, there's another one. Here we go. <laughs> wow, really cool. And all of this again was just from one sweet potato. I just want to talk just for a second about how I planted these in here. I did tell you that I took little pieces of the sweet potato and just put them in, but you want to have certain amounts of spacing. If you were planting them outside, you would actually make about 10 inch wide and 10 inch high mounds of dirt. Again, you can cover that up with plastic and keep it warm while it's warming up outside and your sweet potatoes are needing like some extra warmth before the sun comes out. Make sure you provide about three and a half feet between the 10 inch high and the 10 inch wide rows of, of dirt. And then plant those sweet potatoes about 12 inches apart. So they have a little bit of room to grow. You can see how big these sweet potatoes are when I harvest them. Potatoes are really high in a lot of nutrients. They are high in magnesium, they're high in B vitamins, phosphorus, manganese, uh, copper, calcium, zinc, chromium, uh, just to mention a few. So they're super healthy. Uh, they're not as high in carbohydrates as regular potatoes, so they could be a diet choice if you're watching your carbohydrates. Anyway, they're good to eat. So you wanna check them for disease. Properly cured and stored sweet potatoes can actually keep for several months, and we did the curing. I'm gonna leave them out to dry like I showed you. What I did was I just put newspaper outside I ran a fan over it for two weeks just to keep some cool air growing because it's very, very hot where I am. A good sweet potato looks like this. The skin looks fresh and plump. It feels firm and solid and even heavy and it has no odor. Make sure to harvest these tubers on a day when the soil is dry because these thin skins can actually be more susceptible to damage when you're harvesting if they are wet. Now tubers can grow more than a foot away from that plant and any nicks on the skin can cause them to spoil. So if you find any nicks when you've actually harvested, go ahead and eat those first. Now tiny nicks will heal, so don't worry about those.
You will notice when we went to harvest these that I harvested them about four months, but also when the vines were dying back. You'll notice they were brown, they were looking a little yellow. I knew it was time to harvest these. You also don't want to let these get too big because they won't be as tasty if they're too big. Anyway, this is Nurse Amy talking about sweet potatoes today. Thank you for joining us and you have a beautiful day.